Hey, welcome to Intro to Java with an emphasis on AP Computer Science A with Tokyo EdTech. That is me. Our topic today is very important. It's called inheritance. So what we're going to learn about is first, what is inheritance? We're talking about the idea of a superclass versus a subclass. We're going to learn about the extends keyword and the super keyword. Very important. And we'll learn a little bit more about method overriding. Uh, method overriding is very similar to method overloading and uh, you'll see yeah, yeah, a little bit what that looks like. So the first thing is, what is inheritance? And here's a little chart to kind of or kind of display to show you what that kind of looks like. Um, so I'm not sure why you can see the uh, if you can see the uh, things there, but or not. But anyway, um, so basically, what we're trying to say with inheritance is we're trying to organize our classes, organize our objects into a hierarchy. So you can see here that a person has a name and an age. Uh, we have our mutator methods, our setters. We have our accessor methods, our getters. And in this case, the person class is going to be what's called our super class. And then below the person class, we have two subclasses, a student and a teacher. So what this says is that a student is a person. A teacher is a person. So as a person, a student has a name and an age uh, and the associated setters and getters. A teacher has a name and an age and the associated setters and getters. But a student also has an extra attribute, in this case grade, so grade level, and the setters and getters for that. And the teacher has an extra attribute, in this case department, it's a string. We have a setter and a getter for that. So this allows us to program our objects into a hierarchy. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that. So first, um, we have our first person class. This is the same person class we've used uh, in previous uh, videos. So we've got two private attributes, name and age. We've got our setters, we've got our getters. In this case, we have just a default constructor. Uh, there's another constructor there. And then we have one non-static method called, say, greeting. So let's go ahead and program that. So let's say person, let's say Bob equals new person. And we'll say Bob.setName. Uh, let's see what's obviously Bob's set, set name is gonna be Bob. <laughs> Bob. And uh, say Bob.setAge. To give Bob an age here, we'll call him. We'll say he's 21. Uh, all right. So nothing new here. It's same stuff we've done all along. And so I can so say I can compile this, and I can go ahead and compile this. Okay. Now what I can also do is I'm going to go ahead and just do this. I'm going to say person sue equals new person. I'm going to say sue dot set name. Sue, and I, I could have made a new constructor for this, but we'll just do it this way. If you look at my book, it's done with the non-default constructor. Set age, and we'll say how old is Sue going to be? She's going to be 17. And then we'll say person, uh, Jason, equals new person. And we'll say Jason.set name. Oops, Jason. And Jason.set age. All right, and let's go ahead and compile this just to make sure everything's working. Okay, now we didn't see anything when we executed it because, of course, you know, we didn't print anything. But what we could do, we could just go, we could do again, Bob. Dot, what was it? Uh, uh, say greet. Let's go ahead and do that one. So say greeting. Go ahead and copy that. Paste it. Say Sue. And we'll say Jason. Okay, so let's just test it, make sure it's working. Okay, so we've got, hi, my name is Bob, hi, my name is Sue, hi, my name is Jason. So up to this point, there's nothing new that we haven't done before. Okay, so what we want to do, though, is we want to make a new class called student. So it's going to look like this, student, Sue, equals new student. And to do that, I'm gonna go up here and do extends. I'm gonna 
compile that. I'm going to go back here and see what I want to compile it and run it. And there should be no change. Okay, so notice this class has no methods, has no setters, no getters, no attributes. But everything's working because, let me go back to the little chart there, we have said that the student extends the person class. So because of that, it inherits all of the attributes, all of the methods of the parent class, of the super class. Sometimes you hear it called parent class. Pretty cool. Okay. So let's go back, do the same thing with the teacher class. Say extends a person. So we can go down here to this. We can say teacher. Compile that and run it. Awesomeness. Okay, so now what's really cool about this is now I can go to my student class and I can add attributes just for that class. So I can say uh, private int uh, grade is equal zero. And then we can do our public setters and getters. Public uh, void set uh, grade int grade. And we'll say this dot grade equals grade. And we'll do our getter public int the return type get grade. And we say uh, return oops, return return this dot grade. So let's go ahead and compile that and test it. So we can say System dot system dot out dot print ln grade su dot get grade. So I'm compile it, execute it, and ah, I should do this afterwards. Oh, sorry, I forgot to set the grade. So we'll say su is a senior. Congratulations. Uh, 12. Well, and run. So you can see now, Sue now has three attributes. She has two attributes from her parent class, from the parent class, and then one attribute added just for the student class. I can now do the same thing with the teacher class. I can say, you know, private uh, string uh, department. And then public uh, void set department uh, string department <laughs> it's very repetitive, doesn't it? Um, this dot department equals department. And actually, there are IDs that will do this for you. Just push a button; it takes care of it. Um, string get department, but it's probably good practice as a beginner to type all this stuff out. And return this dot department. Oops. And we'll compile that. So let's go ahead and give J Jason a department. And did I put a space there? No, I didn't. Say Jason dot set department. Department. Uh, art. And then we'll say lazy so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and department department Jason dot get department so pile it run it and you can see here so now Bob we have a Bob object which is a person we have a sue object which is a student and we have a JSON object, which is a uh, teacher. So what's cool about this is let's say later in our program, we needed to add something. So if we needed, if we wanted to add an attribute, uh, what's something? So let's say like double height for whatever reason we need this health information, 0, 0.0. We would only have to add it here in the person class. And then the student class and teacher class would automatically get that you know, get that attribute added as well. Uh, so this is one of the useful features of, oops, one of the useful features of object-oriented programming. And 
so that you know the way you organize your code can be very very efficient um, okay so I was gonna get the method overriding but let me do one other thing really quickly because uh, there is another thing you need to know um, so what I want to do is I want to add a new constructor instead of the default constructor so yeah, I didn't really yeah I'll, I'll do it like this so this is gonna be person constructor so it's gonna be person string name int h and it's gonna be this dot name equals name and this dot age equals age all right so i'm gonna to go to my student class so what i need to do in here is i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to do student string name uh, int age and there's other ways to go about these things uh, what I have to do here, oh, and I'm going to put int grade. What I have to do here is the super keyword. Okay, so let me explain how that works. Well, actually, let's go ahead and just test the code first. Um, so what I'm going to do is person, it's going to be Bob, and he's 21, we said. So I'm going to get rid of that. So we've created a new constructor. Same thing here with Sue. Sue, she's 17 and she's in grade 12. So we're going to get rid of all these things. Let's go compile it, see if it works. Here, can't find symbol. I spelled string wrong. Uh, file is that person. You guys probably noticed that I did not. Uh, okay, let's try it again. Let's try to compile it first, huh? And some method void in it not found. What did I do wrong? Void. Ah, I know I did it wrong. Sure. Um, so. Uh, let's see what's left. Teacher job one is 17. Ah, okay. So, okay, we got to program this one too. Um, so, I'm going to do teacher uh, string name uh, int age string department. And then I'm going to go ahead and do super name age. And this dot department equals department. Okay, so let's try and compile that. So compile that. And then I gotta do, okay. A lot of stuff here to keep, keep a track of. I gotta put this in correctly now, 48 and art. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of all that. Compile it again. Okay, there we go. So you can see everything's working as we wanted it. So let me explain this one more time here. Um, so here is our Bob uh, instantiation, object instantiation. So that's a person. So we got string name int age. And this is, this is what we've been doing all along. This is, this is from previous units. Now a student, we have to call the super class constructor. If we don't, it calls the default one. So name and age. So it comes to here because the parent class is person, name, and age. Same thing with teacher.java. We call the super class constructor, which has name and age. That, that initializes our name and age values. And we also added our this.department equals department. And then down here, everything works exactly as it did before. So that is, that is the main kind of gist of inheritance where we have a parent class with some attributes. Let me go back to that chart. We have parent class with attributes and methods. They are inherited by the subclass or subclass is, and the subclasses can have their own attributes that only they have. And uh, so the way you do that is to create constructors, in the subclass constructors, you need, well, first you need to extend, then you need to call the superclass. So those are kind of two really important steps. So extends, 
and superclass constructor. And then the final thing is method overriding. Uh, this is similar to method overloading. So method overloading was like method and then method, you know, string, and then let's say method, you know, we just saw that with the constructors, comma, int. Uh, so method uh, overloading is based on the signature. Method overriding is a little bit different. So if you look up here in our class, we have say greeting. So that is inherited by the student class. It is inherited by the teacher class. But what we can do is we can copy this, pop it into here, and then we can add ln uh, I am in grade plus grade plus quote period quote semicolon. And then I can copy this into my teacher class. And I am in the department department. Okay, let's compile all this stuff. Ah, this is fascinating. Okay. I knew this was going to come up somewhere. Uh, okay. And let's compile that. Let's see if we have compiles. Okay. So this is kind of a weird one. Uh, so you notice here, hi, my name is name. Does not work. Because it is, inher it is private and it is inherited from the person class. So to do that, we need to do this dot get name. So we have to use the public accessor method. And we do the same thing here in teacher. Uh, this dot get name. Okay, so now I'm gonna run this. Let's see what happens here. Okay, I Space there, department. Pop again. Pop that again, just for good measure. Okay. So you can see here, we did say greeting for Bob. Bob is a person. So for Bob, it just says, Hi, my name is Bob. For Sue, it says, Hi, my name is Sue. I'm in grade 12. And for Jason, it says, Hi, my name is Jason. I'm in the art department. So this is method overriding. Okay. So what happens is there's, if there's a method, it first looks here. Okay? If it finds that method, it calls it. If not, it goes up to the parent class and looks for the method. If it's there, it calls the parent class method. So we say that this method overrides, or the subclass method overrides the parent class method. So override is like takes over. So depending on what type of object, in this case, teacher, student, it will call the method for that particular object, if it exists. So it'll go up that chain, so from the subclass to the superclass. If it doesn't find it in the subclass, it looks in the superclass because it inherited it. But what we can do is we can override and make a custom one for the subclass. This is a pretty powerful thing. Okay. So I think that about covers it. That was a lot. So you might need to watch that one again because there's a lot of little code nuances and there are a lot of little things to keep track of. So we looked at what inheritance is. We realized what a superclass and subclass are looking at that nice little chart. And we looked at the two keywords. We need extends and super. Um, extends tells Java which is the superclass and then the super keyword calls the super class constructor. And then we looked at the idea of method overriding. So thanks for watching and good luck.